Okay, welcome to the continuation of the infectious diseases. Okay, if you are a 22 year old female with inability to fully close your right eye, you have decreased right forehead movement and absence of the right nasolabial fold mm -hmm. plus target shaped erythematous patches. Mm -hmm. So, what bugs causing that? Oh, it's Lyme disease. So this lady has bad palsy, and it burps stir for a bird or free. <laughs> the the Lyme bug. Bird or free. Yeah, excellent. Borrelia, bird or free. It's present. So Lyme has early localized, which is days to one month after a tick. Uh, present with mm -hmm. erythema, migraine, eighty percent of patient fatigue. Malaise, lethargy, headache, neck stiffness, myalgia, arthralgia. So if someone is present with that, these sorts of symptoms, you treat it with doxy without doing without doing any test. But if mm -hmm. the patient have early disseminated, which is carditis, could be neurologic mm -hmm. manifestation, okay. muscular conjunctivitis, multiple erythema migraine in the skin. Then in this case, you may do some testing and you order maybe IV sifter axon if it's carditis or neurologic and the late to chronic or chronic months to years after tick can it present muscular 60% of untreated patient arthritis and the neurologic encephalomyelitis peripheral neuropathy and those types of symptoms mm -hmm. so that's the thing okay now if you are a 45 year old male with uh, uh, bloody diarrhea, intermittent bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain, and an intentional weight loss. When I check your CD4, is it 28? Mm. When I examine you, there is uh, moderate cervical lymph adenopathy, plus mild mm. tenderness at the left lower quadrant. Mm. So what, what's causing that? Hmm? Oh, this is crypto, um, radius. Cryptosporidium? So, cryptosporidium co doesn't cause a bloody diarrhea. It causes wa severe watery diarrhea, low grade fever, and weight loss with a CD4 less than 180. So, this one, when you have a bloody diarrhea with weight loss, okay, and the small, uh, hem small volume diarrhea, this is cytomegalovirus. Oh, okay. okay, intermittent, small diarrhea, hematochesia, abdominal pain, low grade fever, weight loss. Okay, present with a CD4 less than 50. You don't confuse it with Mycobacterium avium complex, present with watery diarrhea, high fever, and weight loss. Okay, mm. Mike, another one that associated with HIV which is Microsporum, Microsporidium, and Isosporidium. Present with watery diarrhea plus crampy abdominal pain, weight mm -hmm. loss without fever. Okay, yeah. so just abdominal pain and diarrhea. Now, if you are a 30, 35 year old male mm -hmm. with pain on swallowing and substernal burning for a week. HIV is positive and uh, you have history of medication non-compliance. When I examine your oral cavity shows white plaques on the buccal mucosa and pellet that are easily removable. So and you have difficulty swallowing. So how do you how should I treat this painful swallowing? Oh, so this is candida and you should give them either um Nystatin or fluconazole? Yeah, you give them oral fluconazole associated mm -hmm. with white plex oral thrush. However, if there's no white thrush, okay, then you can do endoscopy. When you do endoscopy, if you found round ovoid ulcers with herpetic vesicles plus perioral HSV, then that's HSV virus. Mm -hmm. But if you found deep linear ulcers with distal and distal surfaces, that is CMV. CMV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, if you have, uh, can can be idiopathic aphthous ulcer. Okay, this. Mm -hmm. 
And now, if you are a 55-year-old woman with low-grade fever, weight loss of 10 pounds, and you underwent uh, tooth extraction a month ago, now you have a 3 out of 6 holosystolic murmur at the apex, echo, which was moderate mitral regurg, with 6 mm mobile mass attached to the mitral valve. So what's causing that? Atrial myxoma. Wait, sorry. She had a tooth extraction, and what did you say? She had weight loss. Fever and a murmur. Oh, endocarditis. Yeah, but what what bacteria? Oh, viridin. Yeah, or sanguinis, or mitis, or Alice, Miller, those those other Sabrinas, those are same mm -hmm. same bug so mm -hmm. how about if, they, if I tell you infective endocarditis with prosthetic valve intravascular catheters implanted devices pacemaker defibrillation and IV drug abuser what bacteria Safarius. Safarius, okay how about a procedure that involve incision and biopsy of respiratory tract That's a viridan streptococci. How about okay. if I tell you intravascular catheter, prosthetic valve, pacemaker, or defibrillator? Epidermal? Yeah, coagulase negative stuff. Look, okay. How about if I tell you there is nosocomial urinary tract infection and then you had endocarditis? What is that? Enterococcus? Excellent, yeah, enterococci. Colon cancer, inflammatory bowel disease, that's strep bovis, strep galatliticus, everybody knows that. How about if I tell you infective endocarditis with immunocompromised, chronic indwelling catheters, and prolonged antibiotic therapy? Mm. Not sure. That's a fungi, infective endocarditis. Fungi, okay. Now, if you are a 45-year-old Asian immigrant who have a worsening sore throat, difficulty swallowing for the past 24 hours, your voice is muffled and you, drool, you have drooling and harsh... Uh, and you have harsh thrill associated with respiration, on examination, there is a few cervical lymph node palpable and there is tenderness to palpation over his larynx. So what's causing that? How old? 45, Asian immigrant, dysphagia, dysphonia, dys... Uh, dysphagia, dysphonia, drooling, yeah. So what's mm -hmm. causing that? Nothing. I don't know. That's an epiglottitis, so treatment. Yeah, uh, but epiglottitis in L. I, I knew that, but isn't that in kids when they're not vaccinated? No, it can happen in elderly too. In adults. Uh, okay, I've never seen an adult case. That's why I was like, wait, it sounds like epiglottitis, but it's okay. Yeah, because maybe because Asian immigrant and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hemophilus influenzae strip pathogen, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, we are immigrants, we can have anything, so that's why Trump mm -hmm. want to ban us, you know. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. So, if you are a 28 year old male and 20. your boyfriend has HIV, mm. okay? And uh, hepatitis A antibody is positive, and hepatitis B surface antibody negative, and mm. uh, HIV RNA is eleven thousand. So, what vaccine should you you should give this guy? So he has antibodies to happy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so happy that means he has antibodies. So we give him happy vaccine. What else? Cocco. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe. Um. What else? Yeah, so HIV patient, you want to vaccinate them for hepatitis A if they have a chronic liver disease or they have hepatitis B virus or hepatitis C. Men who have sex with men, IV drug abuser, mm -hmm. that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Hepatitis B virus, all patient you talk, who doesn't have immunity. HPV, men and women, 9 to 26 years old, you want to vaccinate them. Influenza, you do annually for all patients. Meningococcal, all patients age 11 to 18. Mm -hmm. And the people who, are, who live in close proximity, like college students, military recruits, mm -hmm. incarcerated mm -hmm. patients, acyplenia, or complement deficiency, then you want to do that. Pneumococcal, you started with PCV 13 one time, and then PPSV 23. Eight weeks mm -hmm. later, okay, and then every five years you want to do PPSV 23, and then you know Tdap, you give them Tdap once, okay, and then you give Tdap mm -hmm. for women during each pregnancy, and then you do Td every ten years following Tdap, okay, and you want to avoid the live vaccines, MMR, Versala. And live attenuated influenza contraindicated if the CD4 doesn't 200. Now, this is a good case. If you're a 34 old male from South Asia, mm -hmm. you have malaise, headache, dry cough, and examination. You have on left forearm reveal 4 out of 4, 4 by 4 hypopigmented plaque with no sensation to pinprick. Left upper arm has a significant muscle atrophy. So how do you how do you diagnose that? With no pain on pinprick and muscle atrophy, and he's from where? Hmm. What is it? Where is he from? South Asia. And you said he doesn't feel pain on the arm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Is it leprosy? Yeah, so this is mycobacterium leprae, so you want to do skin biopsy, good job. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are a 41 Asian American with severe shortness of breath, cough, and hemoptysis, uh, you, you, so I gave you INH, rifampin, ethambutol, and pyrazinamide, okay? But then you developed ASTALT both around 100. So what do you do? How do you treat that? ASTLT is around 100. Mm -hmm. It could be nephronic pain. What is it? Mm. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is INH induced hepatitis. You just continue the management. Nothing that you can do right now. It's mm -hmm. going to get better. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a 19 year old male with one week history of fever, fatigue, sore throat, exam shows enlarged tonsil with whitish exudate and enlarged, slightly tender lymph nodes deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle bilaterally. The exam mm -hmm. is otherwise unremarkable. So, what test do you order? Monopole. Hmm? Monopole. Yeah, yeah, heterophile antibody testing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are a 22 year old male with low grade fever, joint pain, dry cough, and chest pain for the past week, and you have a painful erythematous nodule on the anterior surface of both legs. Okay, so what's causing this condition in a guy from Arizona? Coccidiomycosis. Wow, good job. It's coccidiomycosis, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, if you are a 64-year-old male 
we just had an upper respiratory tract infection uh, and then developed malaise, productive cough. Two days later, to you present to the emergency room with confusion, severe dyspnea, and you have coughing up copious amount of yellowish sputum streaked with the blood today. Temperature is 104, blood pressure is 150 over 90. Chest x ray shows infiltrate in the lung and the lung midfield bilaterally as well as multiple thin walled cavities. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of forgot the beginning. <laughs> the A and how old was he? Sorry. Mm -hmm. 64. Um, was he having some kind of pneumonia? Yeah, so this when they say chest x ray have a uh, multiple thin walled cavities bilaterally that's a staph aureus staph aureus oh, so he had like influenza superimposed with staph aureus wow good job yeah smart yeah oh. so there is yeah okay now if you are a 46 year old farmer uh, who just stepped on a rusty nail while working when I examine your right heel, right heel is swollen, red, tender, and warm. X-ray of the right foot shows features suggestive of osteomyelitis. So what bacteria is causing this osteomyelitis? Pseudomonas. Yeah, this is pseudomonas. Perfect. Now, if you are a 65-year-old nursing home resident who have altered mental status, decreased oral intake, and you, you're bedridden due to right-sided hemiparesis and you have a chronic indwelling Foley catheter so that's a big in the history mm -hmm. due to obstructive uropathy okay <coughs> now you present with a fever blood pressure 100 over 60 mucous membrane are dry and there is a stage 2 sacral decubitus ulcer Leukocyte is 13,000. Urinalysis pH is of the urine is 8.5. Okay, so what's causing this condition? Um, a UTI. Yeah, what bacteria? Oh, um, E. coli. Yeah, so that's that's a typical, it's a kind of a tough question. So when they tell you alkaline urine, the pH is 8.5 of the urine, and it uh, looks like a UTI infection, and he has a chronic indwelling Foley catheter, that's a Proteus mirabilis. A Proteus, yeah, okay. <coughs> okay, so that's the idea of this question. So pH, uh, pH of the urine more than 7. That's the biggest clue. Mm -hmm. And chronic mm -hmm. and dwelling catheter. <clears throat> now if you're a 35 uh, old white male with high grade fever, chills, rigors and malaise, pain in your right cough for the last 24 hour, when I examine you there is generalized swelling of the cough with linear streaks of erythema, the lesion is warm, tender, and not very well demarcated. And there is a scaling found in the two, so that's a that's a good clue to help you figure out the diagnosis. Okay, the KO preparation of these lesions shows high show high fee. So how do you treat that? Mm -hmm. The corner so this, okay. they, uh, mm -hmm. they want to trick you for this condition. Actually, the patient what is having, when I say generalized swelling of the cough with linear streaks of erythema, warm, tender oh, cough. So that's a cellulitis, right? Cellulitis, yeah. Yeah, so you give them nafcillin, that's the thing. But the uh, okay. scaling, he has tinea pedis. Tinea pedis act as a needus for bacteria. Uh, to
to come and go satellites. So this is like staff or you? Yeah, so it's staff or you. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, so it's a tricky question. Now, if you're a 34 old female with a purulent vaginal discharge and lower abdominal pain, on exam there is friable cervix coated with a mucopurulent discharge. Gram mm -hmm. stain shows intracellular gram negative diplococci. Yeah, this can't be easier. Yeah. So, this I gave him so azithromycin and ceftriaxone. What else do you want to test for? You did, uh, you should do um, the, what do you call the DNA probe for chlamydia and gonorrhea. You did the gonorrhea, right? You did the chlamydia too. On the HIV? Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. So, you want to screen other STD. You want to test for syphilis, HIV. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are a 42 year old male with pain and difficulty swallowing, when I do endoscopy, I found irregular linear ulcers in the distal esophagus. I think that's it, you know. Now, that tells you the diagnosis, but I can make it easier by giving you the biopsy shows intranuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusions. So how do you treat that? Again, cyclone. Excellent, yeah, this is a CMV. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, CMV. So first, any time you have someone with odinophagia and HIV, mm -hmm. if there is mild symptoms and oral thrush, then you just give him peric fluconazole and save him the headache of endoscopy. But if it's severe symptoms <clears throat> and you suspect esophagitis, then you do endoscopy. If it's linear, you give him gancyclovir. If it's vesicles, then you give him acyclovir. Mm -hmm. And that's it. <coughs> now, <coughs> Uh, if you are a 28 year old female with fever fever and a and a murmur murmur and a fever that increase in intensity with inspiration and your IV drug abuser so how do I treat your condition here you have like hmm? right it's a right sided murmur so it would be like a track of the reverse and you give him Yeah, excellent. You give him Vanco. So, infective endocarditis, an IV drug abuser. Okay. Uh, Stafford, yes, is the most common co organism. And tricuspid involvement, right sides, more common than the aortic. And they have holocystotic murmur and increase in inspiration. Indicate the tricuspid. They can have septic pulmonary emboli, like hypoxia and stuff. They can have splinter hemorrhage, chain wheel lesion. Okay. <coughs> and heart failure symptoms more common when the aortic valve involved. Okay, not the tricuspid. So that's the thing. Now, if you are a 36 year old woman with malaise, fever, and chills, okay? And you're using tamp four to six tampons per day. Okay, that's a good clue. However, when I examine you, there is several pustules on the chest, external surfaces of the forearm. Jo and then palms and soles are unaffected. Joint exam does not show redness or swelling, but the right wrist and right ankle are tender to palpation. Boom. I gave you two big clues. So what is, huh? So that's the thing. It's the yeah, so when I wanted to confuse you with a tampon, but she is so this is when I tell you right right wrist right wrist and right ankle tender to palpation. What does that tell you? What is that? That's migratory arthritis, right? Yeah. Migratory arthritis. That's one. Second thing, several postules on the chest and external surfaces of the forearm. What is that? So this is uh, 
the disseminated gonococcal infection. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, they have okay. skin pustules and this uh, migratory polyarthralgia. Mm -hmm. You treat with IV cifteriaxone and joint drainage if for purulent arthritis. Mm -hmm. And then you give him empiric azithromycin or doxy if there is a chlamydia infection. And, and you gotta treat the sexual partner too. Yeah. yeah that's an important. Um, no, I'm so sorry. My daughter just left. Okay, now if you're a 23 year old nurse with needle stick injury while drawing blood from a patient with acute hepatitis B, and you are already vaccinated for hepatitis B, so what should I do right now? I don't think you give them anything. They're yeah, ready excellent. Just reassure. That's the thing. Now, if you're a 55 Caucasian male, when I examine you, I found ulcer on the right foot surrounded by halo of erythema. X-ray revealed bony destruction consistent with osteomyelitis. So, what's causing... So, what is this... What type of spread of osteomyelitis in someone who have diabetes? What's the, what's your question? So this okay. the idea of this question they say like there's so there are different types of spread of infection there are hematogenous and there is contagious spread and there is direct inoculation so for someone who have diabetes they are at increased risk for osteomyelitis due to contagious spread so of infection so that foot will be infected and goes to the bone and okay. cause osteomyelitis, so this type, so <clears throat> that's the idea of this. It's a pretty low yield, not that important. Now, this is a good one. If you're a 25 year old male with painless ulcer in the penis and you're previously hospitalized for severe rash and facial swelling after taking penicillin, okay? When I do dark field microscopy, I found spirochete. So how do I treat your painless ulcer? Penicillin. So he has allergy to penicillin. Oh. Yeah. So I give him doxycycline. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, same thing uh, for, for primary, secondary, and latent. Uh, we give them doxycycline if they are allergic to penicillin. Tertiary syphilis, if, uh, syphilis, if they are allergic to penicillin, you give them cifteriaxone. Okay, but if pregnant, you want to desensitize them for penicillin. Okay. Now, if you are a 30-year-old male with known HIV infection, okay, so what vaccine should I give you? Um, HIV. Give them, oh, pneumococcal. Yeah, pneumococcal we would give them. Yeah, pneumococcal, Tdap, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll give them meningococcal if they live in college, dormitory, and stuff like that. Influenza annually. Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah. HPV if they are, if they are like 11 to 26 years old. Yeah, that's about it for HIV. <clears throat> now, if you are a 72-year-old male with non-productive cough, fever malaise, runny nose, and severe body aches. On lung exam, there is diffuse crackles with occasional wheezes. Chest x-ray shows diffuse interstitial infiltrate bilaterally. So what's, what organism causing that issue? Or how do I treat that? So how old is the patient again? 72 So strep pneumonia maybe 
So strip pneumonia x-ray is lower in filtrate. But this patient have severe body aches and bilateral interstitial infiltrate. So this is influenza pneumonia. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you give them acetamivir. Yeah. So there's a background noise. Like, are you able to eliminate that like you did this afternoon? No, I'm not. <laughs> hmm? Okay, now a good question. If you are an 18-year-old woman with vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, okay, and you had nasal bleeding that required anterior packing, however, right now you have temperature of 102, blood pressure 90 over 60, okay, and heart rate of 120. When I examine you, there is diffuse confluent erythematous macule on the trunk and extremities. So what's your diagnosis here? And how old? 18. Oh, 18. And what else besides the papules? Hemodynamic instability. So maybe disseminated meningococcemia? <laughs> So disseminated meningococcemia, they have postules and migratory yeah. polyarthralgia. So this one, yeah, most a lot of students confuse those two. So this one had an anterior packing. So when you had a nose packing and you have erythematous macule plus hemodynamic instability, that's a toxic shock syndrome. Oh, he had nasal. Okay. So the features is fever, hypotension, diffuse macular erythema, skin disquamation, including palms, soles, one to two weeks after illness. Okay, and then they have multi-system involvement. It can involve the GI, it causes vomiting, and diarrhea, it can cause muscular, severe myalgia, and elevated creatine kinase. It can cause mucous membrane hyperemia. BUN and creatinine will increase. Uh, hematologic platelet less than 100,000. AST, ALT, total bilirubin more than two times upper normal limit. Central nervous system can have altered mental status without focal neurologic deficit. So that's the features of toxic shock syndrome. Now, if you are a 65 African American male, okay, mm -hmm. with a who have vertebral fracture, very unfortunate. So you can't move your both of your legs and you can't control your bladder. So I I put a catheter for micturation. So what's the best thing to decrease risk of infection, risk of UTI, here? What's what will decrease the risk? What's the question? Yeah, so someone on a mm -hmm. Foley catheter, so what is the best oh. thing to do to decrease risk of infection of UTI? I think intermittent change or something. Excellent, yeah, intermittent catheterization. Okay, if you are a 35-year-old woman with a three days of burning substernal excruciating pain with swallowing, Okay. Okay. CD4 is 30. So, what is your diagnosis here? So polyesophagitis. Is it viral or fungal? Candidiasis fungal. Hmm. It is. It, so this one, candidiasis doesn't cause substernal excruciating pain. When you have this severe pain, that's most likely viral esophagitis. It's unlikely to be fungal. Wait, there's a dinophage? So you're a little confusing here. They both cause a dinophagia. So you're saying candidiasis doesn't cause it? No, it causes it, but it's not that severe picture. They don't tell you. They have may maybe like just pain with the swallowing, mild pain. While, but if they tell you excruciating pain with the swallowing, that's a viral, as a fagitis. Really?
Yeah, it's very tough. One time I had a friend of mine, he was like really a very smart guy and nice and very kind. So, and he was in medical school too. Like he was like a he was like the first of his class every day, every year. He was like a year ahead of me. So, he had leukemia. So, <clears throat> they did a bone marrow transplant for him. So they put him on immunosuppression and stuff, so every time we go to the cafeteria and stuff, every time he eat a bite of the food, he feel excruciating pain because at the time he had some viral esophagitis. So it was very... So it, could be, it could be HSV or... CMV. What? Okay. Yeah. That's why we do endoscopy is the only way to differentiate, but... Okay, yeah. So now, if you're a 62 year old woman with pain behind your right heel for a day, the pain is worse with activity and relieved with rest. Okay, and you've been taking Cipro for UTI. So, what is your diagnosis here? There's that occurred in little kids, not in older people, the tendon rupture. Yeah, you're right. Achilles tendinopathy, it's can occur in a 62-year-old woman. It could occur in older people too? Yeah, yeah. It's called tendinopathy, not yeah. rupture. Yeah. yeah. But I thought it was only limited to children or something. No, no, actually the risk factors for Achilles tendinopathy is age more than 60, female, normal body mass index, okay. concurrent use of steroid, mm -hmm. and history of organ transplant, okay? okay. So bring a, bring a hard drive to load these risk factors in. So those are risk factors for Achilles tendinopathy with the mm -hmm. alone. Okay. So if you have a normal BMI, you have an increased risk for it. Okay. Now, good question. If you are a 40 year old male with six months of fever, chills, and productive cough, chest imaging shows multiple nodules and some with cavitation. Okay, when I do bronchoscopic sample culture, yield light growth of, of branching filamentous bacteria that partially acid fast. So what bacteria is that? Nocardia. Yeah, excellent. Nocardia. This is gram positive road. Partially acid fast, anaerobic, endemic in soil, and disease follows inhalation of aerosolized uh, saprophytes or traumatic inoculation into skin. Most common in immunocompromised and elderly, uh, they present with systemic symptoms plus pneumonia similar to TB, they have cavitation, and they can cause neural tropism, brain abscess, cutaneous involvement. How do you treat that? Um, how do you treat nocardia? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you give them TMP, SMX. Okay. Okay. And surgical drainage if for an abscess. They have close ups. Okay, good question now. If you're a 26 year old male with two week history of fatigue, fever, muscle aches, and arthralgia, peripheral blood smear shows basophilic lymphocyte with vocculated appearance and heterophil antibody is negative. So what is that? How old again? 26. Is there any generalized lymphadenopathy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's splenomegaly. Yeah. Now infectious mono. But the heterophil antibody is negative, so... So it doesn't have to be positive. I mean, it's not... 
like a highly sensitive thing for it. It could be negative. Yeah, so that's a tricky one. A lot of us, to, like, you know, this human body, like, is made just in, just in such a tricky way. So, so this is actually, they call it mononucleosis-like syndrome. It's, what? yeah, it's present in the same way as an EBV, infectious mononucleosis. The only difference is that heterophile antibody is negative, And this is caused by cytomegalovirus infection. But I thought heterophil antibody doesn't have, like it doesn't make or break the diagnosis, but here it seems like that's the case. Yeah, another, uh, other differentials like mononucleosis-like syndrome, they don't have pharyngitis. Okay. Okay. And they have atypical lymphocyte on peripheral smear. Well, so does... Um, and, Mono, right? Yeah, yeah, but the but the lymphocyte have basophilic cells with vacuolated appearance. Okay. So the cells are different and no pharyngitis. Yeah, yeah. The differentiating features. Yeah, good job. Yeah, that's it. Now, if you're a 30-year-old HIV male with left-sided paralysis of recent onset, when I examine you, there is loss of recent memory and expressive aphasia, hyperreflexia, hypertonia, and upgoing plantar response on the left side. Okay, when I do CT, I find multiple hypodense non-enhancing lesion with no mass effect in the cerebral white matter. So what's the diagnosis here? Lymphoma. Hmm? Lymphoma. So or PML. Yeah, excellent. It's PML. Progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. The the main thing that tells you the diagnosis the CT shows multiple hypodense non enhancing lesion and the cerebral white matter. Lymphoma is enhancing and usually solitary solitary weakly enhancing in the periventricular area. Okay. okay. And also would be multiple enhancing? Yeah, multiple ring enhancing lesion. Okay. So that's a good good stuff. And the survival they say is six months. Okay. That's pretty tough. <laughs> now, good stuff. If you are a 36 year old male, okay, who brought to the emergency room by your roommate with confusion and agitation and tonic clonic seizure, a neuro exam shows upgoing plantar response, CSF shows everything is normal except the white PC is 90 and 90% 90 lymphocyte so what's what do you do what's next step how do you treat mm, is there any headache you said or no yeah there's alternate mental status seizure oh maybe HSV encephalitis yeah, you remember that we did the case today? You just give them IV, cyclovir. Right. By just doing the CSF lymphocyte and stuff, you don't need to do the, wait for the PCR of HSV. Yeah, so this is viral encephalitis, causes fever, altered mental status, with confusion, <laughs> agitation, coma, fever. They can have hemiparesis, cranial nerve palsy, signs of focal neurologic deficit, hyperreflexia and the labs they have increased white BC on cerebrospinal fluid okay and the MRI they have temporal lobe abnormality and the diagnosis that CSF shows presence of viral DNA or on PCR 
and the treatment you you give IV acyclovir immediately after getting the CSF results. Okay, now if you are a 36 year old female with fever and cough, you have foul smelling sputum. Chest X-ray shows right upper lobe infiltrate. Okay. And you just had an upper GI endoscopy eight days ago. Okay. So how do you treat this condition? Well, is she having a lung abscess, first of all? Yeah, so this is aspiration pneumonia when they have foul smelling and in the right upper lobe infiltrate. Okay. So this most likely caused by anaerobes. So you want to give clindamycin that covers anaerobes. Okay. So what was the problem about the endoscopy that caused the aspiration? Yeah, yeah, that's an increased risk instrumentation of the esophagus and increased risk for aspiration pneumonia. Just like seizure, stroke, and increased risk Parkinson, Alzheimer, increased risk for aspiration pneumonia. Okay. Yeah, that's a big clue for aspiration pneumonia. Okay, now if you're a 25 year old male who have sudden nausea started three hours ago, followed by six or seven episodes of vomiting, and you ate a fried rice from a dinner at a Chinese restaurant. Yeah, what what bacteria is that? Serious. Yeah, Bacillus serious. That's an easy one. Now, if you were a 55 year old male with uh, who just went through renal transplant due to end stage renal disease. Now you're taking prednisone and cyclosporine. So what sh what medication should I add? Um, renal transplant, prednisone, cyclosporine. Mm. What would you add? Like I mean, you're trying to add for what? For the renal transplant or to protect from these two? Protect from infection. Oh. You want to give them TMP. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you want to give them back term TMP SMX to prevent PCP because it's high risk. Okay, and you can even give them gancyclovir, valcyclovir to prevent CMV mm -hmm. infection. And you want to give them vaccination for influenza, pneumococcal, HPV. Okay, now good case if you have fatigue sore throat, fever, pharyngeal hyperemia, and uh, cervical lymphadenopathy. What's your diagnosis? How old? 18 year old male. Fatigue, sore throat, and what else did you say? Cervical lymphadenopathy. Is this like center criteria? That's an infectious mononucleosis. Yeah. Oh, darn. But you, there's only one lymph node involved, I thought. Huh? What is it? I thought it was generalized lymph node. You yeah. only thought... <laughs> no, no, they just mentioned there is a physical exam shows cervical lymphadenopathy. That's it, they didn't mention. Okay, all right. Pharyngeal hyperemia. Okay, now, yeah, I think I did that. Okay, now if you're a 75 year old female, present with cough and a fever, okay, and you had hmm, a traumatic right foot amputation, now you have crackles on the right lung base, chest x-ray, right lower lobe, infiltrate. So what bacteria is that? Wow. What does the amputation have to do? I don't know. Pseudomonas? 
No, this is trip pneumonia. Okay. But wouldn't it be lobar consolidation and not an infiltrate? No, no, they're like lobar infiltrate, that's how it shows. They can have, these can say consolidation or infiltrate. Now let's do a rapid, very rapid review of what we discussed for today. We talked about Lyme disease, target lesion, and uh, CMV causes, shows l uh, the odinophagia and have, have linear uh, arrangement in the esophagus. And CMV diarrhea, it present like bloody small volume with abdominal pain. Prosthetic, prosthetic valve associated with staph aureus, dental manipulation with viridan. Okay, and the uh, UTI associated with enterococci, infective endocarditis. We talked about vaccination for HIV. We discussed about uh, TB, leprae. And then we talked about the heterophile antibody test. You can order it for someone that you suspect uh, having. So because you know, infectious mononucleosis can present similar to HIV. So in this case, if you want to differentiate to the two, you can order heterophile antibody test. If you are from Arizona and have erythematous nodule on the shin, uh, on the anterior surface of both legs, that coccidiomycosis, if chest x-ray shows multiple thin-walled cavities, that's a staph aureus. If you have a rusty nail osteomyelitis that's a pseudomonas if you have Foley catheter and urine pH of 8.5 that's a proteus if you have a tender leg that's erythematous that's a nafcillin for staph aureus we test for syphilis for anyone who have a gonorrhea or chlamydia we give gancyclovir if there is linear ulcers on distal esophagus. We give vanco for infective endocarditis. Migratory polyarthralgia and postular skin lesion associated with disseminated gonococcal infection. If you have syphilis and you can't take penicillin, I'll give you doxycycline. We give oseltamavir for influenza pneumonia. Toxic shock syndrome associated with erythematous skin plus hypotension. Excruciating painful swallowing, that's a viral esophagitis. Achilles tendinopathy can happen in females more than 60 years old with normal BMI and especially if they're taking steroid or organ transplant. If you have syphilis, then you get a test for HIV because this could be associated with that too. If you have a branching, what's going on here? Okay, if you have a branching filamentous bacteria that partially acid fast, that's a nocardia. If you have a large basophilic lymphocyte with vaculated appearance and negative heterophile antibody, that's a cytomegalovirus. If 
you have multiple hypodense non-enhancing lesion on the white matter, that's a PML, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. We give IV acyclovir for viral encephalitis. If you have foul smelling sputum with right upper lobe infiltrate, that's a clindamycin. We give TMP SMX for renal transplant. Avoid contact if you have EBV, sports contact. If you have a right lower lobe infiltrate with fever and a cough, that's a streptococcus pneumonia. And boom, that's the end of infectious diseases. How